Hey everybody, Craig here. Package, delivery driver, just dropped it off to me. This came from borrowlenses.com. I've got a camera body in here along with the lens that I think you guys are gonna enjoy watching this review. Get it opened up here. Now I ordered the Sony, uh, I don't wanna tell you exactly what I got just yet. Let me just open it up and we'll get right to it. Oh, first the thank you for ordering. Don't need that right now. Open up the first plastic baggie. And we have the Sony 55 to 210 lens. This is a kit lens. We also have, ooh, kind of stuck in there. Battery, battery charger. It should be, oh, another battery, because Sony's are notorious for not having very good battery life. And then of course, the Sony A6000. It's about a four-year-old camera. Now I got this camera body and lens for one main reason. The Sony A6000, along with this kit lens on amazon.com, goes for 798 bucks. 798 bucks, it's less than a thousand. You could be shooting sports photography for under a thousand bucks. So if you're looking just to get into it, to test the waters to see if maybe you like it, this would be a great way to get into it. You've got under a thousand bucks. Obviously you got a lens here. I think it's a 4.5 to 6.3 aperture. Not good probably in low light situations, but you could probably shoot outside such as soccer and softball, which softball, that's what I'm gonna be shooting with this as a softball tournament, multi-field, it's gonna be exciting and fun. I'm gonna take you guys along with me and we'll see how this thing performs. So that's what I got for you. I need to get the batteries charged up so I can get it ready to go and uh, you can join me out there. And if you can't join me out there, grab your own camera and you know, get out and shoot. Hey everybody, Craig here, out here at a softball tournament, testing out the Sony A6000, along with the 55 to 210 millimeter Sony lens. It's the kit lens. We're checking to see if this thing is good enough to shoot sports with. So I've got the softball tournament behind me happening right now. Been using this for almost an hour. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. Autofocusing is really fast on this. Uh, don't know how many shots are in focus. I left the beep on. That way I know the camera says it's in focus. So when I get back and things aren't in focus, something lied or this just isn't working really well. Also brought with me the Nikon D7200 with the Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter lens. And when you go back and forth from one to the other, you can sure tell the weight difference, obviously. But anyway, we'll find out for sure how this thing's doing when I get back in the studio and we'll put this in the Lightroom. We'll see how the photos look. That's what we got going on today. I'm gonna go shoot some more with this. It's fun and it's relatively intuitive. If I need to figure something out, it doesn't take me too long to figure out how to change what I need to change. So I'm gonna get back and shoot. You guys have some fun. Hopefully, if you're not watching this, you're out shooting. Hey everybody, Craig here. What's going on out there? I just got back shooting a girls fast pitch softball tournament. Five fields, lots of teams and I took the Sony A6000 camera with me. Why did I take the Sony A6000 camera with me? It's about four and a half years old. Let's take a look at the specs and find out. Now, the reason I picked this camera, the Sony A6000 mirrorless digital camera, and this right here I took along with the 55 to 210 kit lens, which is the lens you see in the photo. Because at this price, which is $748, and it was $798 when I started this video, it's dropped about 50 bucks, obviously. But I picked this because at this price point, with a 55 to 210 millimeter lens, you might be able to shoot sports, outdoor sports, because this lens is a 4.5 to 6.3 aperture. Indoor sports is probably out of the question. But outdoors in some good light, you might be able to pull it off. Let's take a look at some of the specs, shall we? This one has 179 autofocus points, which is incredible. And when it came out, it was one of the world's fastest focusing cameras. 
and also shoots 11 frames per second. It also has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, but again, at this price, $748, you've got a camera body, you have a lens, that's pretty inexpensive to get started in sports photography. Did it live up to expectations or did it fail miserably? Let's find out. So let's take a look at some of the photos I took. A few of these have been edited. I will point them out as we go along. Go over here and develop modules. You can see this one I did edit. This was the original. I was over on the third baseline, about 10 feet off behind a fence, taking some photos around the corner of the fence. I wasn't shooting through the fence because personally, I don't like doing that unless I absolutely have to. But after some editing, I've got it down to this and it doesn't look too bad. You go into a one to three ratio. It's not bad at all. But if you really zoom in, you can see it just loses everything. It's not sharp. It's kind of bl almost blurry looking, even though according to the camera, it was in focus because I kept a beep on. I know it bothers people, but that way I knew it was actually in focus for sure. So let's move on to the second photo. We got this one. This was a down the third baseline, a nice hit. As you can see again, once you zoom all the way in, it's not sharp. Even at one to three, it doesn't look too bad. And obviously if you get way out here, it looks okay. It's not bad. But when you really zoom in, so some people like the pixel peep. It's just not sharp. Not at all. All right. Check out the next photo. This was also, this was a hit to shortstop, I believe. As you can see, when you zoom in again, it's just not sharp. Zoomed out, it doesn't look too bad. But you can see the ball's not really sharp. Nothing's really in focus. It doesn't look like, even though the camera said, it was in focus. All right, next photo. Now this one here, just to give you a comparison, this was taken with the Nikon D7200 and the Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter lens. This was taken from center field. You can see you can zoom in, got some good expressions on the faces. The catcher's got her eyes closed. That's always funny to watch, but it doesn't look too bad at all. All right, so let's go to another one. Now this was taken with the Sony A6000 again zoomed at 210 millimeters and this was down it's right next to me she's maybe 12 feet away from me as you can see it's in focus but when you zoom in again one to one it gets a little blurry it looks like it's not as sharp as it should be one to three it's still not bad but once you do the one to one it really breaks down quickly i did this string of photos to show you the focus tracking so i got that one that one's good and then she's out of focus so you got the first two, let's do it again. The first two in focus, and then it loses it for some reason and nothing else is in focus, anything around here. Maybe this looks like it may have picked up down here a little bit. And then it goes back and it catches her again. So it's like, not sure what happened there. Now this shot taken from center field, you can see it's just not doing it. That lens just can't handle this. I think the camera's okay. I think the camera body's fine. If you go one to three, it still doesn't look bad. And you can read this stuff, but when you zoom way in, you can see it's just not sharp. It should be a lot sharper than that. I am also shoot wildlife photography and this great blue heron flew over and I had to take a photo, which it doesn't look terrible, but it's not great. It's just too far away and there's a little dot on the sensor there. All right, so these ones, here's another one to show you a quick little stretch. First one looking pretty good, pretty good. And I will say this camera, once it locks on focus, it locks on and will follow your subject the whole way. However, it seems to lose it every once in a while. It just doesn't look as good as I feel it should. Like right there, you can see it's just not, it's just not sharp. It should be sharper. This was taken from behind home plate. Here's how it originally looked. I did some corrections on it and brought it all the way into here. And it doesn't look bad again. Even one to three, it's still pretty good. But when you get in, when you go one to one, it's just not sharp and it should be sharp. Now, let me show you what I'm actually talking about. Here's a shot, Sony 86,000. You zoom all the way in one to one. I mean, it's just not sharp at all. You, these should be so easy to read. Right there, it looks fine. One to three, it's not bad. But when you get all the way in, not good. Now. This next photo was taken and you can immediately see the difference in it. This was taken with an Nikon D7200, the one I mentioned earlier. Right away, you can see the difference between that photo and this photo. And yes, this was in focus. According to the camera, it said it was in focus. But you can see how much sharper this is. Even if I zoom in, let's do one to three. Looks really good. One to one. 
You can see how easily you can read the letters and the words. Now there's another sequence for you just to show you how many photos you can take at once and this time it didn't lose focus at all. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen. Say so thirteen photos. Thirteen photos. It just ripped them off really fast. What do I think about the camera? I think the camera body is great. It locks on focus really quickly. And of course, you know, looking through the OLED viewfinder is really nice because you can see it, your exposure immediately. However, the lens, I think, fails miserably. I think the lens is the main problem with this. So would you use this for uh, sports photography if you're just getting into it? I wouldn't because you want your photos to look more decent than these look right here. Camera body's good. What I need to do is get another lens and try that on there to see if that helps the problem. It may or may not. And if you guys want me to do that, leave some comments below and I will do that for you. In the meantime, head on over to sportsphoto101.com. Check out the website. You can learn some more tips and tricks for sports photography. And if you like this uh, review I did, leave some comments below about that as well. All right, I got to get going. I got some more stuff I need to get out and shoot. And if you don't have anything else you got going on, grab your camera and get out and shoot.